supplies include stockinettes, two 3-inch soft rolls, one 3-inch plaster slab, one 2-inch plaster slab, one 3-inch roll of flannel, and one 2-inch roll of flannel. Apply additional extra short segments of soft roll over the bony prominences of the elbow to ensure adequate padding. Avoid excessive soft roll anteriorly in the elbow crease. Wrap in a crisscross fashion around the hand and wrist, tearing soft roll while passing through the first web space. Ensure that there are two layers of soft roll on the hand, extending no further than the palmar crease to leave the metacarpophalangeal joints free. The unfolded 3-inch plaster slab should be approximately 2 inches shorter than the distance from the palmar crease to the axilla. Trim the slab as needed. The folded 2-inch plaster slab should be approximately the same length as the distance from the wrist to the elbow crease. Wet the unfolded 3-inch plaster slab and apply along the posterior aspect of the arm and ulnar aspect of the forearm. Fold over any excess plaster to ensure it does not overhang the soft roll. Smooth the plaster to adhere to the underlying soft roll. Overwrap the plaster with flannel from proximal to the elbow. It is not necessary to overwrap the full length of plaster at this point. Overwrap the splint with 2 inch flannel from distal to proximal, first in a crisscross manner around the hand and wrist, and then proceeding proximally. Tension the flannel appropriately to prevent bunching, but avoiding excessive compression of the limb. Wrap the flannel around the elbow in a figure of 8 pattern, ensuring full coverage of the underlying plaster. Continue wrapping proximally to cover the full extent of the splint. Continue wrapping proximally to cover the full extent of the splint. Mold the plaster to set in the desired position as dictated by the injury.
finished splint should allow excellent movement at the metacarpophalangeal joints, thumb, and shoulder.